lets is absorbed and can stay in our body for more than 30 years. These rules will protect workers across Europe from getting cancer. The dangers posed by lead to human health have been known for decades. But while we've stopped using it in our pipes and petrol, the metal is still widespread and key to our modern world. So in this episode, we've come to Belgium to look at the latest efforts at EU level to protect workers from harmful substances, including lead. What will new restrictions mean for public health? Why have they been updated? And do they go far enough? Welcome to Real Economy. Vehicle batteries, roofing, high voltage cables. Europe consumes millions of tons of lead each year. But what happens when the products containing it reach the end of their lifespan? That's when businesses like Campin step in. One of Europe's biggest lead recyclers, the company reclaims and repurposes huge amounts of the metal at its main plant here in Belgium and sites in France. We are recycling about 90 to 95,000 tons of lead-containing scraps. Most of it are uh, car batteries. In fact, we recycle in this plant here about 10,000 car batteries a day. And why is it important that places like this exist? Well, you know, if we wouldn't recycle those batteries, they would end up somewhere in a dump, which is obviously not that good. And by the way, the industry needs the lead, so it means that we would need to get lead from the mines which either are in Europe or probably outside of Europe, which, which is, again, yeah, not that good for the environment. Campine plays a vital role, then, in reducing our waste mountain. But lead is also highly hazardous. That's why the company takes the protection of its workforce extremely seriously. Strict safety protocols, including regular blood tests for its staff, are in place. The firm's lead exposure limits are well below the EU's current standards, but the new rules will mean it has to go further. We were well aware about these new regulations and we were working, of course, already for a long time into this direction. But of course, we will have to work further, but we will get there. The new rules on lead update the previous EU restrictions established in 1982. That lowers the biological exposure limit from 70 to 50 micrograms per 100 millilitres of blood. But why the change and why now? The health effects of lead are known for a long time. But now we have more data indicating that these health effects also happen and occur at lower exposure levels. So we need to bring these levels down to prevent chronic disorders like, for example, cancer. As well as the increased possibility of cancer, evidence suggests female workers face an additional risk as lead can affect pregnant women and the developing fetus. Those representing workers welcome the new rules but insist they must be enforced across the entirety of the bloc. Our experience is that it is a large diversity as to how these rules are effectively enforced at workplaces. And of course, that's where, where guidelines come in. It's, it's where the role and the function of trade union reps, uh, uh, labor inspectorates and so on uh, com comes into play. But it is a challenge to ensure that these rules are applied equally throughout Europe. Along with lead, Europe has moved to limit for the first time exposure to a class of chemical compounds called dicyanides. Used to form polymers, for instance, in wind turbines, they can cause respiratory conditions like asthma. To protect workers in so-called green industries, the new maximum exposure limit will be set at 6 milligrams per cubic metre in an eight-hour working day. In a moment, I'll speak to the MEP that helped to deliver Europe's new chemical limits. But before all that, here's our crash course. The EU's stricter exposure limits for harmful substances like lead will soon enter into force. It's currently estimated around 100,000 workers are exposed to the metal in their jobs. Lead is highly toxic and can cause cancer, damage the nervous system, impact fertility and affect the kidneys, heart and blood. Some 300 cases of ill health occur annually in Europe due to lead exposure. 
The new rules aim to better protect workers by bringing the limit to one-fifth of the current level. The EU is also setting limits for the first time ever on dicyanides. Used widely in industry, such chemicals can cause respiratory irritation and asthma. Currently, 4.2 million workers in the block are thought to be exposed to such substances. Nikolai Willemsen, thank you for speaking to Euronews. How significant are these new limits for the protection of workers? These are very significant. We are talking about that human lives will be saved, less workers will get sick from going to work, less workers will, will die. What we are doing is that we are revising for the first time in 40 years the limit value on lead, but we're also for the first time ever introducing uh, a limit value on uh, dicyanides. This means that metal workers, industrial workers, those who are making the wind turbine, who are making the, the batteries, those actually in the forefront of the green transition will be better protected due to this legislation. Are the limits low enough? Not if you ask me, and not if you ask uh, the majority here in the parliament. But these are still significant improvements for workers. And I think it's also something that is a huge victory uh, for me uh, in these negotiations is that we managed to have a review clause. So within five years we'll have a review, meaning that we will not have to wait another 40 years for, for better improvement. Do you think you will be revising these rules pretty quickly then? That's, of course, important because we know there's always new technologies, there's always new things uh, coming forward that shows that, that these harmful substances do more harm than we actually think. Uh, and the fact is just that now we're taking a significant step and we need to make sure that we don't have to wait decades again before further steps can be taken. How confident are you that these new limits will be enforced across the European Union? What we're speaking about here is hard law. So we're talking about union law that employers will need to respect. And if they do not respect that, then the authorities will have to make sure they face the consequences. Isn't it the case, no matter what you do, more and more workers could be exposed to these substances because of the green transition? Yes, more workers will be exposed to these dangerous substances due to the green transition. And that is why it is so crucial that we make sure that the workers are better protected that those who do the green transition, the workers doing it underground, do not lose their life or get sick due to their work. Once in force, member states will have to implement Europe's new chemical rules into national law within two years.